To be or not to be, that's the question. But in fact, more than a question, it's a decision. And this is what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about not Hamlet's dilemma, but I want to talk about decision. Decisions that cannot be made by asking a simple question. And you know, since Shakespeare time, we've become much more connected, much more sophisticated, much more informed. And yet, we all struggle with decision. And in fact, it may be that very access to information that makes decision making much more difficult now than it was before. Let's look at decision. What makes decision difficult? First, there is uncertainty. Some decisions depend on the weather. Investment decisions depend on what will happen in the future. And in investment, in fact, there's an additional difficulty is you don't make one decision now, but you have to understand the future decisions that are involved um, in the process. Another element that makes decision complicated is sometimes you don't have one decision maker. You have a couple or 10, a dozen uh, people that are involved in the decision. That makes it difficult because you need to have a process to put all those opinions and all those decisions together to come up with one outcome in terms of the decision. Another characteristic of decision which makes them difficult is they can have multiple attributes. There is not one single objective, there's multiple of them. When you're buying a house, for most of us, you have to trade off price for location and for size. And that's difficult because we need then, as human beings and decision maker, to decide what trade-offs we're willing to make. So all those elements make decision difficult and they make difficult decision problems that are hard to solve. But more than that, decisions are also hard to frame. This is a case when you're not, you don't have a process to aggregate um, the decision of each decision maker involved. There's a case when you don't know the attributes that are relevant to the alternative that you make. And so today, the, the system that I want to show you, the debater, is a system that helps us just do that, because when, you're, when we are in those situations, when we don't have a good frame, what we do is we debate, we debate with ourselves, or we debate with others. And the debater system just helps us better debate, have better information, so we can understand the alternative we face. But before I move to the debater, I want to mention another system called Watson. Watson is a question answering system, so what it does is it answers questions. Um, and it's very famous for having won, again, human master player at the game of Jeopardy in 2011. But, you know, winning at a trivia game was not the purpose of such a machine. Um, since then, it's been um, modified, in fact, um, to better serve humans, and it helps doctors find treatment for uh, patients. And it even helps, in a, in a different way, um, chefs find ingredients to put in the recipe to make them even more creative. But what's interesting about Watson is not what it does, but how it works. Um, Watson is a cognitive computing machine, and that's by opposition to a programming machine. So Watson is not told what to do in the old way of doing systems. It's taught how to learn. It's given ways to reason, it's given observation, and from that the machine is able to form a model, a reasoning model of the word, and is able to answer questions. And the debater is in fact a second generation cognitive computing system, which rather than finding facts, what it does, it given a body of knowledge, and then you know, we can throw whatever topic or issues or decision we want. And what it will do is it will build pro-claims and con-claims, in addition to that, it will also gather all the supporting evidence for those claims. And what it does is that it does it systematically. When as humans, you know, we might do that, but we might stop when we have sufficient claims. With no assurance, in fact, that we found the most salient one, um, the computer is not limited in that way, and it's unbiased. So it will take care of the information gathering. And so us as humans, now, what we can do is we can think about our preferences our values and our priorities and make better informed decisions. So why is this difficult? Well, first it's difficult in terms of size. If you consider a, a body of knowledge such as Wikipedia, you might have about 100 billion claim candidates in it, and yet for a given topic, what you have that's relevant is about 100 and even less on average claims. So if you do the ratio, you'll find that it's a very, very small proportion that you need to find among all those candidates. So it's really akin to finding a needle in a haystack. 
And in fact, it's even worse because the needle is of a very distinct nature than the haystack. Consider, for instance, the topic, the sale of violent video games should, to minors should be banned. And then we have the fourth statement that I'm going to read. The first one is, violent video games should not be sold to children. The second one is, violent video games are significantly associated with increased aggressive behavior. Doom has been blamed for school shooting. And finally, video game addiction is excessive or compulsive use of video games that interferes with daily lives. At a high level, you would think they're all relevant to the topic. Um, and, and they are relevant, but are they uh, relevant claims? In fact, no. Um, the first one is simply a repetition of the topic, so it doesn't add anything to what we're trying to do. And this is a challenge that we have with natural language, and it also participates to its beauty, um, is the fact that there is multiple ways to say the same thing. And so our challenge for us is to find a way to teach the computer to recognize those cases. The second one is a valid claim. Um, it, it addresses a topic, and in, in fact, it um, supports it. The third one mentions a video game, but it's a specific video game. So it, it doesn't, uh, it's not completely relevant to the topic. It might be used in a debate as an example, but it cannot be used directly as a claim. And the fourth one is in, of the same nature. It's, that it's not too narrow, it's a definition. So a definition is useful when you're discussing, but it's not useful uh, um, for the debating aspect. At this point, I want to show you a demo. Uh, that demo is... Um, based on Wikipedia as a body of knowledge. Um, and uh, we've chosen a few topics. And then what the system does at this point is it's going to uh, gather the top six ranked uh, pro claims and con claims. I just want you to listen carefully, because this is mostly a sound video. Hello, and welcome to IBM Debating Technologies. Today, we shall focus on detecting relevant claims. To proceed, please select the topic, and I will share with you my top predictions for pro claims and con claims. So those are topics we've chosen from a, a debating database, just as a training purpose. Scanned approximately 4 million Wikipedia articles. Returning 10 most relevant articles. Scanned all 3,000 sentences in top 10 articles. Detected sentences which contain candidate claims. Identified borders of candidate claims. Assessed pro and con polarity of candidate claims. Constructed demo speech with top claim predictions. Ready to deliver. You have selected the topic. Space should be colonized. I would like to raise the following claims in support of the topic. The colonization of space will protect humanity in the event of global nuclear warfare. Furthermore, a human colony beyond the Earth is feasible or scientifically desirable in light of cost efficiency. In addition, human survival may be better assured through the colonization of space. Finally, plants can thrive at pressures much lower than those on Earth. You have selected the topic. Space should be colonized. I would like to raise the following claims that contest the topic. Space colonization is not widely acknowledged as a sufficiently valuable social goal. Moreover, space colonization and space science could prevent many human extinction scenarios. OK, so. That's where we are at this point. I want to acknowledge the team. This is a multi-year, multi-team effort by IBM Research, led by our HIFAR Research Lab and Dan Goodfront and Noam Sloanim. Um, we really are in the middle of it at this point, and uh, errors are to be expected. If, if you've listened carefully, uh, the debater implied that preventing human extinction was not something to be wished for. And so that's definitely a problem of polarity. Um, but just envision, just envision when that system, and it will, um, will reach human-grade quality with all the uh, memory and, and uh, recall um, capacity of a computer. Just imagine how it will change how we make decisions. Uh, when you have a, a career change or when you, you're um, 
wondering about uh, education. Um, when you're with your doctor and you're discussing treatment option, how useful it will be to have a tool that in an unbiased and exhaustive way can tell you the pro and cons of the different alternatives that you face. Um, if you're a, a company, you might wonder in going into a market or with whom to partner, and again, this is useful there. Um, and finally, you know, it may also, uh, may also influence public policy discussions. All right, so in conclusion, I just want to say that this is again another example where technology is going to change the way we work and the way we live. Thank you.